Hello, sports industry, and welcome to The Bounce Back. I'm Gareth Bowles, Chief Executive and Co-Founder here at Two Circles. And through this session today with my colleagues, Lucinda and Louis, we wanted to talk to you about why we believe that COVID, whilst being the hardest and indeed most traumatic and gravest time our industry's faced for such a long time, there will also be a period and with transformation happens and a new opportunity is born. We have an opportunity to define the next normal for our industry. And what we're going to take you through today is why we believe the demand side of sport, with so much evidence to support it, is going to reach new heights through this decade. And as COVID indeed has learned to be lived with, and we as a race and a society learn to recreate experiences and indeed products that can represent sport to enable it to be a better place we'll see that the bounce back is going to be a glorious time for our industry. And if we achieve anything today, what we hope we do is create this as a thought starter in your mind. Indeed, last month, we took 200 sports executives through this exact same session. In fact, a longer version of it, a more immersive working version of it exclusively for our clients. But what we wanted to do was just do a snippet of it today. The exact same theme, snippet it up to drive the conversation forward because this is the most challenging time that I've yet experienced in our industry. And indeed, from many of the veterans I've spoken to across the world, I recognise as one that many of us have experienced. Many of the themes we'll share today are pretty positive, but it's not lost on us that we're stood here in a very negative moment. Indeed, it's really dark. In so many countries around the world right now, we recognise that daily cases, daily hospitalisations, and indeed, most tragically of all, daily death tolls are at near record highs, if not record highs. And with that, we recognise there's more reasons than ever to be pessimistic. But that's exactly why we believe it's right now to be talking about the bounce back. And to be saying, despite being in the darkest depth of this tunnel that we're in, that we call a pandemic today, we see a light at the end of the tunnel where we will learn to live with COVID. With every jab of vaccine that gets shot into one's arms, we see an opportunity coming out the other side. We see a light. All the data represents that the sports industry will bounce back. The demand for sports will be higher than ever. But our ability to supply and service that demand is going to require us to adapt to a new normal. And what we want to do today is start that conversation. Since time began... Sports fan attention has driven sports commercial programs. And sports fan attention, as Lucinda and Lou will take you through in a moment, is recalibrating on scales never been seen before. There'll be more attention up for grabs than we've ever seen with the breaking of habits and the reforming of them on the other side of the restriction of movement. And with that, it's going to force us into a situation to be both more digital than ever, but more innovative than ever, which is going to challenge the very roots of sports calendars, sports governance structures, and indeed sports commercial programs. But herein lies the bounce back opportunity, because there is one, but full of threat too. The recalibration of sports is going to require a rewiring of the way we commercialise our industry. And we think that's a glorious opportunity, but hopefully one we can share with you today. In fact, we were starting this conversation just last month with our 200 sports um, executives who've joined us um, as clients of Two Circles in this exact same, same conversation. Because whilst we're in the dark point in the tunnel, we think it's so important we start preparing. We appreciate that right now, just to get schedules on, and indeed competitions, tournaments and leagues fulfilled, our commitments so our existing partners fulfilled through our existing seasons in the height of the pandemic is unbelievably difficult and indeed must be first priority. But what we think is increasingly important as we see the light at the end of the tunnel is that we're preparing for the transition to a new world, a new type of business. And I was so buoyed to hear over half of the sports executives that we were working with, which is a reasonable sample. We're in the same place. And what we hope today and through sharing this conversation with you is that we can all move forward as an industry to continue in the recalibration of where attention is going to be to rewire our commercial programs to support them. So are we in progress? What are we in progress for? Let's take back a step. This time last year, before the pandemic and all those new words were in our lexicon, 
we said, we recorded that we'd had 60 years of uninterrupted growth. That is, for global sports rights owner revenues, we'd had 60 years where our top line just got bigger and bigger and bigger. It's an incredible story. And we said, what we did predict, was that we'd have 10 further years of uninterrupted growth. So much for data. Well, data tells lots of stories. On that instance, it looked very true, but we didn't anticipate the pandemic. And here we are, one year on, having experienced our first year of loss as an industry, collectively. $58 billion in, redu in reduced revenues through a whole vast streams right across the spectrum globally and through every revenue line we saw suffering. We indeed also saw some sprouts of growth as well, but we'll come to those later. But what we are saying is that we believe this loss is temporary. Whilst we can't be clear today, and we're in no business right now of predicting when and indeed how our scientists and our governments around the world will be able to lift these restrictions on our world and enable the next normal to thrive, what we're sure is that will happen, the time will pass, and when it does, the industry's revenues will return to consecutive years of growth. And what we must be doing now, in this darkest and gravest time, is preparing for that moment preparing for the bounce back. Sport industry growth will return. And it will return for lots of different reasons, but there are just a couple that we wanted to pick up on today. What we've seen historically is attention grown. Indeed, sport has taken a disproportionate amount of attention in this post-internet era. If you just go back into the mid-noughties, you'll find that this chart here just shows the last five years, where digital attention has grown to an increasingly big contribution to the overall sports attention, but not yet the revenue shift. We'll come to that again later. But what we've seen, as I said before, is where attention goes, commercial programs follow in sport. And attention has fallen, hence commercial revenue is just one reason why it's fallen so dramatically. We've spent less time consuming sport. And what we see is this COVID sport and attention deficit is gonna return. And that return will come and we'll prepare for that bounce back. And that return will come, and it'll be more digital than it's ever been before. But indeed, there's also gonna be more attention off of grabs than ever been before. And Louis and Lucinda will talk about both of those trends now. The breaking of habits, that we were in such a habitual cycle previously, and we've gone through this period now of nothingness, relatively, and we're gonna come out the other side and habits will refreeze, and therein lies sports attention. To win more attention than ever been before, through a more digital engagement than ever been before, is gonna enable us to take advantage of the demand side benefits that we're gonna see in the next normal, but indeed to be supported by the right servicing of that, which is really our challenge, as I speak to you today, as a group of sports rights owners. So growth will return, of that we're confident. We can't say exactly when, but indeed, as the pandemic softens and vaccines strengthen, we believe that growth will return for sports rights owners' revenues. But those that transition fastest to the next normal are going to be the ones that will benefit most. And we hope this drives that conversation. So I'm going to chuck it over to Lucinda now, who's going to continue that and provide you a little bit more data for where our confidence comes from. Lucinda. Thanks, JB. So yes, growth will return, and let me tell you why we're confident in this. Over the last 12 months, we've seen our world turn upside down. We've seen unprecedented social restrictions. And what this has meant is it has meant that we've been starved of collective experiences, of togetherness. We have felt it and we've seen it everywhere, and no more so in sport, with stadiums sitting empty and fixtures being dropping off our calendars. Why does this matter? It matters because as human beings, we crave togetherness. We crave new collective experiences. It's part of our DNA. It's how we evolved. We evolved learning and experiencing things with each other. And sport? Well, sport is the ultimate source of togetherness. Oh, many of us I know probably have experienced it, that emotional connection you have, where you can be in a stadium or in a pub with hundreds or thousands of other people and you're all experiencing this thing. It might be slightly different for each of us, but you're all experiencing it together, the highs and the lows. But we've been stripped of these experiences or this sense of togetherness over the last 10 months. And that means that there's been a void, a void that has been filled with maybe other things. Maybe we've gone on longer walks than we necessarily would have or explored more of the local area around us. Or, I mean, me personally, I hate to think about how many Zoom quizzes I've done, 
Or, I mean, I learned how to make banana bread, which was, you know, took a couple of attempts, but I got there eventually. And while these have potentially filled that void, they haven't fully satisfied it. And that means that the void has left throttle demand. Throttle demand for togetherness, so throttle demand for sport. This matters because it means when we get to a period of being allowed out where social restrictions begin to ease, we'll see a surge, a boost, as we seek out satisfaction of that void, as we look to satisfy that need for togetherness that we've been stripped of over the last 10 months. And that's going to be great for sport, because sport is in a prime position to get a boost from this. As we've said, it is the ultimate source of togetherness, we think. Now look, the cynics within us say, well, the last 10 months has changed our habits, it's ripped up the rule books. And maybe there's an element that some of the new habits we've brought in, we've realised the convenience of them. And that means that we won't go back to the old ways or how we, we might change the pursuits that we had prior to COVID. But we think that there are three key indicators as to why we're confident in the prediction of the bounce back and why we think that sport will see a surge and a bounce back. And those three things are history, purchase and consumption demand, and societal behaviour. We look at history. History, Mark Twain once said, never repeats itself, but it does often rhyme. If we look back to the last time that we saw similar levels of social restrictions, what we can see is that people choose to go out and seek out togetherness following those restrictions being lifted. We seek new experiences and we seek it through sport. There was a surge in demand for sport following the easing of the social restrictions after World War II. And that meant that the English Football League saw 52% year-on-year growth in attendance when comparing it to the five years pre-war. 52% year-on-year growth as an average. Therefore, following social restrictions, this shows that there is a surge in demand. And we think the same will happen this time. It may not happen to the same level, but we may see 5 to 10% growth. And therefore, a question to consider is how are your businesses best positioned to capitalise on that growth? Why are we confident that we'll see a similar surge? Well, we think there are clear indicators as to history rhyming already. And first of all, we might look to purchasing behaviour. Whilst we have not had many opportunities to purchase sport tickets to sporting events over the last 10 months, what we've seen is where there are those opportunities, there's been demand there and there's been high demand. We looked at the Lions Tour for 2021 and we see over 300,000 ticket applications for that event. That's people preempting being able to return in a time, as GB mentioned, where we're at potentially across the world, some of the peaks in our COVID case journey. But people are preempting the return there and they're wanting it. There's a demand there. And that should be great news for us. It should give us optimism. And it's not only the Lions tour, but if we look to the Super Bowl next weekend, what we're seeing is that at the beginning of February, we saw that the ticket market reached record levels. There's clear demand for people wanting to attend and experience sporting events as they seek to satisfy that togetherness that we've been missing for so long. And it's not just purchasing behavior, but consumption behavior also should give us confidence that we'll see a bounce back. As through this, we can see the demand for sport. We've looked to sport as an entertainment over the last 10 months. And that's through both across live and non-live. I only need to look back to a couple of weeks when the top of the table clash between Man United and Liverpool was on. Millions of us tuned in. 4.5 to be specific, which was record levels. I was one of them. I myself don't class myself as a football fan, but I tuned in and I watched start to finish as I was trying to seek out that togetherness, that buzz that everyone had been talking about and I wanted to be part of. And it's not just live sport, but also non-live sport has surged in demand over the last 10 months. There's been numerous non-live sporting documentaries that have been released which have seen surging demand such as the last dance or the drive to survive which over 1 million uk households tuned into but i'm more interested in the next drive to survive that's going to come out i'm hoping in march i check daily for a date and i can't wait to watch it to consume it and to get behind the season 
to see the highs and the lows and to see it from a different perspective. To hear about all the driving drama or the politicalness that we might not necessarily get when we're watching in the live environment. I can't wait and I, I cannot wait to see what new records could be set this March when the, when the Drive to Survive next season is released. So, we've seen history, we've seen a surge in demand following social restrictions, following World War II, and we've seen indications that we're seeing that rhyme again with purchasing and consumption demand being high for sport. But there still might be cynics within us that say, well, how can we be confident that people will return and feel, will feel comfortable in large groups? Ultimately, COVID is a health issue. And as GB said, there's an, it will never be eradicated from our society. We will just learn to live with it. But what we think is we think current societal trends should give us confidence that people will come out and they will want to experience things again in large groups. If we look to how people are preempting the new normal or the next normal, there are signs that people are ready to go out. They're ready to experience new things and to satisfy that craving for togetherness that has been stripped from us for so long. And that's no more so than who those who are in the higher vulnerability category. And I say that when I look to holiday bookings, where May is set to be a record month as we sit at the start of February for holiday bookings or how people are so confident and are ready to return to festivals and are ready to return to those live events in numerous numbers, 82% of them to be specific. And as I said, it's also the higher vulnerability category that are seeing we're seeing this societal trend with over 50s rushing to book holidays following the vaccine announcement. These are all indicators that should give us confidence that people will return in groups, they will go back to pubs, they will go back to festivals, they will go back to sporting events and they will consume sporting events. So we are confident that sports will see a boost, a surge in demand, a bounce back because we've seen it through history, current purchaser and consumption behaviour is indicating that demand is already there. And societal trends should give us confidence that people will want to go out and experience new things. However, it may not bounce back in the same guise as it did pre-COVID. And I'm now going to hand over to Louis, who's going to talk us through how it might be slightly different this time around and what measures we should look to put in place in order to capitalise or still be in a position to capitalise on the bounce back. Thanks, Lucinda. Hi everyone, I'm Louis and thanks for taking some time out of your day today to listen to what we've got to say. So sport will bounce back bigger and better than ever before. Great news, I'm sure we can all agree and we can all go home or stay home happy. No, please don't turn off just yet, there's a little bit more to discuss. We know it's tough at the moment and it's hard and we're not quite in the bounce back just yet, but we're confident that it is coming. And whilst we can all agree that's great news, we also have to recognise that sport isn't just going to return to a pre-pandemic normal. The world of sport will be different because the world will be different, just like all of our lives are and will continue to be different. So that means the commercialisation of sport will also be different in the bounce back. And to make the most of the opportunity that the pent up demand that the Cinders just talked through um, affords us, we have to prepare and really have an answer for the question of what will be different. Over the next five minutes or so, we'd like to chat through two big ways we think that the world of sport will be different in the bounce back. Number one, there will be more sporting attention up for grabs. There will be more sporting attention up for grabs. This is the way it's traditionally worked in the world. We've demonstrated a behaviour that might be purchasing a ticket for an upcoming fixture. We've got a reward which could be a fantastic match day experience, maybe some great food at a reasonable price at halftime, maybe even a win if we're lucky. And that's made some chemistry happen that I'm not gonna pretend I'm smart enough to explain to you today, but basically it's made us feel good. And so when we've received a cue, which could be a beautifully designed email nudging us towards the next relevant fixture, we've thought back to that reward and feeling good and we've repeated our behavior. And over time that's driven these habitual consumption behaviors. But COVID's thrown all of that into disarray. That virtuous cycle no longer works in quite the same way that it used to. If we consider our lives as being able to be 
split up into these finite chunks of time, it might look something like this, with different windows for our different interests. Here's, uh, here's what mine might have looked like in the top right, a very positive looking graph. Uh, some pancakes, love islands, certainly rings a few bells for me. And traditionally, these windows have been frozen, they've been stable. There's not been much room for new interests within our lives. But as Lucinda alluded to, COVID's changing that. There's a few more banana bread, bread makers and jugglers and sourdough bakers amongst us today uh, than there would have been a year ago, I'm sure. So our habits have thawed and they will refreeze differently. If we consider that in a sporting context, the sporting attention of the world has traditionally been pretty well distributed, well allocated amongst the, the various sports in the world. But again, COVID has changed this and has thrown a lot more floating voters out into the experience market. So what does that mean for all of us? What does it mean for our season ticket holders and their routines of attendance? What does it mean for our viewers who are used to tuning in at a regular time each week? What does it mean for our on-sale dates that we've kept consistent for the last five years and have worked really hard to ingrain in the backs of minds of our fans? Well, it probably means we need to refocus our energy back into retention. We've all got greater and, and increasingly efficient at bringing our customers back week on week or year on year or season on season. And so it might mean that we have to refocus and pay more attention to retention again. And that might mean that your cost per renewal goes up slightly. But on the flip side, it could mean your cost per acquisition comes down. There's pent up demand and an experienced market a little bit more predisposed to trying new things. Back in late January, we asked 200 or so of our UK and EMEA clients whether they saw this as more of an opportunity or more as a threat. And most people said opportunity. There was great positivity and optimism amongst our clients on that day. And we agree. Largely, we're optimistic about this and we see it as a, as a fantastic opportunity to drive fandom from our most passive fans to our most loyal, as long as we prepare for the change in the right way. So big change number one, there will be more sporting attention up for grabs. Change number two, digital is now normalised in every part of life. Digital is now normalised in every part of life. Today, this video is a great example of that. I've had very few opportunities to talk to the sports industry and even fewer to do so whilst stood in my front room uh, in my slippers, admittedly, with our pet rabbit looking on as the only physical attendee. But it's happening for all of us. And it's something that was happening pre-COVID as well, but obviously the current situation has accelerated that. How many of us have ordered groceries online for the first time ever in the last 12 months and have been surprised and amazed at how easy it was and how nice it is to not get the lines in your hand from carrying all the bags in one go? How many of us have streamed our first ever online fitness class alongside thousands of others from all across the country and even beyond? And if we look to online car sales, we've seen the growth of places like Kazoo where you can search for a car using numerous filters, guarantee quality and delivery, and you never have to deal with the hassle of arranging an appointment or kicking tires and pretending like you know what you're doing, if you're anything like me. Across buying, consuming and interacting, we're seeing this digitization of life. Entertainment and leisure experiences that can be provided from the comfort of your sofa as long as your internet connection is strong enough, of course. We are at a historic moment of receptiveness, if not expectation, that the things we care about can reach us digitally and personally, and in a way and at a time that works for us. Sport has to react to the same way other sectors have had to. We have to work to ensure we have direct digital relationships with our fans, and work to match those customer expectations, which are now higher than ever. When fans are able to return to stadiums, there will be a huge demand for unique physical experiences. And physical event providers have to ask and answer what physical events can provide 
that digital events cannot. So there'll be more sporting attention up for grabs and digital is now normalized in every part of life. I'm gonna throw back to Gareth now, who's gonna tell us, what do we do now? So what now? What should the sports industry do? There's an attention surge coming, but with different types of attention, where sports fans would have recalibrated how they want to engage with our marvellous industry. And yet, if we supply what we've always supplied, then revenues won't bounce back, and therein lies the opportunity. The sports industry is on the, on the, um, at the precipice of a bounce back. If it can take advantage in this growth of attention and match it with a change in supply to affect what fans want, and that deep understanding of fans will be the underpinning of every and each sports property, sector and industry around our globe. And by fusing those things, we'll look back on this period as an incredibly hard time where we suffered so much loss, but yet also were able to rewire our industry. Just the other day, I was walking on my high street here in London and I saw a public house and the owner was in there literally rewiring his electrics and indeed painting the pub because it continued to be closed for a prolonged period of time. But they've sprung up and diversified their income streams. They've got a takeout business now that they didn't used to have. They've also got a streaming business they didn't used to have with their weekly quiz now being projected to a bigger audience than it used to be. The sports industry's job right now isn't necessarily to go and repaint its stadia or indeed to rewire its electricity. But what it might need to do is rewire its commercial programs to reflect where attention now sits. New attention is going to be generated as we come outside of the, of, of the COVID pandemic as the vaccine's kicking. And as Louis very articulately put it, those that we used to get their attention from are going to be less dependable as their habits have been broken. And those that we didn't necessarily see as target audiences are going to be more open, more predisposed to our property than they've ever been before. To market ourselves and be ready for that in new ways is going to be an amazing challenge. And that's going to require innovation of our experiences. It might also require change the governance of how we manage our rights and indeed our properties. It's absolutely going to require us to communicate in ways that are now just expected. Direct data-driven, digitally native at every turn point. And that transformation, having spent all my professional career working with sports organizations, rights owners around the world to make these changes is one that's a call to action we've been working towards for a long time, but now is more important than ever that our industry needs to go to the next normal to bounce back and to really benefit from this otherwise incredibly hard time. And boy, we know the sports industry needs that bounce back. And what we hope we've done today is brought that conversation further forward in your head and to build on the fact that you know some of your colleagues, as we shared in this presentation today, are also thinking about these things and starting to create the conversation in your organisation. How can sports benefit from what has otherwise been a very difficult time? And the answer relies in bouncing back to take advantage of new attention, but monetizing it in new ways. And what we hope that's done is brought that conversation a little bit closer to your sports rights owner, to your sports industry, to how you can make the world a better place through sport. And we'd love for you to join in that conversation. We've just shared a snippet of the work we were going through with all our clients around the world in January on this very topic. But what we hope we can do is take this conversation forward and help prepare the sports industry for the bounce back and defining that next normal for our industry. We thank you greatly for listening in and look forward to continuing the conversation. Thank you very much.